Why Buddhism declined in India? Was it because of Brahminical forces? Was it because of large-scale destruction and mass slaughter of Buddhist populations during Islamic invasions? Or was it because of the onslaught of Hindu kings like Pushyamitra Sunga or King Shashank? Or if the reason for the decline of Buddhism lied in the internal weaknesses and corruption that has crept into the Indian Buddhism during the Middle Ages? We will try to answer this question which is one of the most enigmatic puzzles in the history of India. We will try to understand why Buddhism declined and was lost in the place where it originated and flourished. We will see if Buddhist chiefs collaborated with the army of Muhammad bin Qasim during the Arab invasions of Sindh in the 8th century and what was the impact of these collaborations on Buddhism in Western India. We will also travel East and South and India and try to understand what happened to Buddhism there and how the persecution and destruction of Buddhism was so complete. There is an interesting fact that all those parts of India which were predominantly Buddhists before the Islamic invasions of the Middle Ages like Punjab, Sindh, Gandhar and Bengal eventually became the stronghold of Islam by 12th century AD. Another interesting question that needs an answer is why Hinduism and Jainism were able to survive the Middle Ages and are thriving even today in India while Buddhism was lost forever. Most of the Buddhist monuments built during the golden ages of India were lost and were rediscovered only during the 19th and 20th centuries after remaining lost for more than 800 years under the debris of history. The Chinese traveler Shuangzang mentions in the 7th century that Buddhism was thriving in India and he was able to count more than 3,000 monasteries with hundreds of thousands of monks residing in these monasteries spread across the country. He has given a detailed account of monasteries from Gandha to Bengal and down south up to present day Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Buddhism was present everywhere in India. But by the end of 12th century, Buddhism had disappeared from most parts of the country. Let's examine the top 10 reasons for the decimation of Buddhism in India. And this will also explain why other Indian religions like Hinduism and Jainism did survive but Buddhism was uprooted from the place of its origin. Before we start to answer the bigger question, we must appreciate that India was never a predominantly Buddhist country as such. Though it is equally true that for a large period in Indian history, Buddhism remained the predominant religion in several parts of India like most parts of modern day Pakistan, Afghanistan, undivided Bengal and Bihar. Another thing that we must appreciate is that India never had a concept of state religion as such and several religious groups were patronized simultaneously by the ruling kings. So let's start to understand the top 10 reasons for the decline of Buddhism in India. Reason number one, persecution by Hindu kings. Hindu kings like Pushyamitra Sung and Shashank are often held responsible for the persecution of Buddhists in India and its eventual decline. The removal of royal patronage and persecution by the Hindu kings were the twin factors that played an important role in the eventual decline of Buddhism. Pushyamitra Sung was the commander-in-chief of the last Mauryan king, Brahadrat. He assassinated the king and captured the Magadh empire. Pushyamitra was hostile towards Buddhist monks, but the decline of Buddhism cannot be attributed to him as Buddhism kept on flourishing for another 1000 years after Pushyamitra and he was not able to uproot Buddhism in India. New historical evidence raises questions on the assumption that he was hostile towards Buddhism as several of the major Buddhist monuments and monasteries were constructed during his period. Shashank, the king of undivided Bengal who ruled during the 7th century is also held responsible for the decline of Buddhism in India. He destroyed several Buddhist monasteries in Patliputra and Gaya of the Magadh region. He even destroyed the holy Mahabodhi tree of Bodhgaya. But even he could not be held responsible for the complete loss of Buddhism as Buddhism kept on flourishing across India after his death. Another Hindu king Mirkul, Ahun, destroyed several monasteries and killed hundreds of monks in the Gandhar and Kashmir region. But his successors supported Buddhism and several new monasteries flourished and many of the monasteries destroyed by him were rebuilt during the period of his successors. So clearly, persecution by the Hindu kings 
does not give a complete answer to this enigmatic puzzle. Reason number two, attack by Brahmins. The attack on Buddhism by Brahmins was two pronged. On one hand, there was a philosophical crusade by Sankracharya and other prominent Brahmin scholars who believed in the supremacy of Vedas. On the other hand, there were efforts to systematically assimilate Buddhism into larger fold of Hinduism. Sankracharya challenged and defeated several prominent Buddhist philosophers, thereby gaining a large number of converts from Buddhism. The defeat of Buddhist scholars at Kanchi proved to be especially devastating for Buddhism in South India. Kumaril Bhatt ran campaigns against Buddhism and he gained a large number of converts for his Mimansa philosophy, which believed in the supremacy of Vedic philosophy. Another significant development that had very adverse impact on the growth of Buddhism, particularly in South India, was the growth of Bhakti movement. Bhakti movement, coupled with the appropriation of Buddhist philosophies, deities and temples, gave a hard blow to Buddhism in South India. The rise of Bhakti movement was successful in blurring the philosophical and spiritual distinctions between Buddhism and Hinduism. Buddha was even given a place as a deity and was pronounced as one of the avatars of Lord Vishnu. Several other Buddhist deities were included in the pantheon of Hindu deities. There was hardly any attempt to refute this Hindu narrative from the Buddhist side. In comparison, Jains responded very differently to similar attempts by Hindus and they came up with their narration and with their own version of Ramayana, Mahabharata and other scriptures and fought fiercely with the Bhakti movement by assimilating the central figures of the movement like Ram and Krishna in their context. But again, we cannot say that Buddhism was lost because of the Brahmanical campaigns against Buddhism. While some Brahmins persecuted Buddhists, there were many Brahmins who also extended support of Buddhism, including material support. Let's examine another important factor that is language. Buddha always preached in the local language of Northern Plains known as practice. But with time, local languages kept on changing and developing. After a few centuries, the language in which Buddha's teachings were codified was no longer easy for the local population to understand. So the priests had to translate his teachings into new local dialects. The challenge became even bigger when the priests started translating the teachings of Buddha into Sanskrit. The result being that only monks could read and understand the teachings. The lay disciples started getting more and more remote from the academic monks of the monasteries. But obviously, this was true to Hinduism also, where nearly all the scriptures were available in Sanskrit only. So this clearly does not explain why Buddhism was lost. It only gives one of the possible reasons for its gradual decline. Let's now go to reason number four, division of Buddhism into several sects. Buddhism got divided into several sects like Mahayan, Vajrayan and several more. But the division of Buddhism into several sects cannot be suggested as a central reason for the decline of Buddhism. The division of religion into different sects was even more prominent and deep in Hinduism and Jainism, but they did manage to survive to the modern ages. Let's have a look at another internal reason. Reason number five, moral and ethical degradation of Sangha. There are ample pieces of evidence to prove that all was not well in the monasteries and Sangha. The monasteries and Sangha attracted different sections of people. Many of them were genuinely interested in their spiritual advancement. But many joined Sangha simply because they did not want to take responsibility for running a household or simply wanted to live without doing any kind of work. Although Buddha had declared that robbers, thieves and jailbreakers cannot become members of Sangha, but admission into Sangha was not a watertight system and many of the undesirable elements found refuge in the monasteries. Many monasteries possessed large properties and owned a large number of servants, cattle, granaries and villages. Several greedy monks started acting as money lenders and invested money in industrial activities. The stories of pregnant nuns were also in plenty. Buddha and several Buddhist kings used to give edicts against religious corruption on regular basis. And clearly, all these practices were against the teachings of Buddha. We cannot say that Buddhism was lost because of moral or ethical degradation of monasteries, because every religion 
has faced this challenge and the corrupt practices of some priests or monks have not led to the disappearance of the religion itself in history. Reason number six, decline of urbanization. Buddhism developed during the period of fast urbanization in India during the 6th and 5th centuries BC. The movement was supported by urban centers and groups associated with urban occupations like traders, bankers and artisans. With the decline of urbanization in India during the Middle Ages, Buddhism lost significant resources to sustain the movement. The majority of monasteries were abandoned and only those monasteries could sustain themselves who had large land assets. When the Arab invasion took place, the majority of Buddhists were living in the urban centers, while rural India was predominantly Hindu. Now let's examine reason number seven, collaboration with Arab invaders in Western India. During the early invasions of Arabs, the Hindu and Buddhist populations of Western India, which included modern-day Sindh, Punjab, Khyber Pakhtun, and areas of Afghanistan, adopted an approach that was opposite to each other. As a result, they were affected in very different ways once the Arab conquest was complete in these regions. While most of the Hindu rulers and communities resisted the invading Arabs, the majority of Buddhist urban trader communities in Western India collaborated with the invading Islamic forces. The Shahnama is full of incidences where the Buddhist chiefs collaborated with the Arab invaders and also provided them essential supplies during their wars with Hindu kings. The Buddhist merchants believed that their economic and trade interests would be best served with the rapid urbanizing trading communities of the Arab world and the opening of trade routes with China and Central Asia. They felt that their economic interests were under threat from the dominant Hindu trading classes. The fear of Hindu traders was running so high that 9 out of the 10 Buddhist communities present in the western regions collaborated with the Arabs as per Shahnama. The Swistan Buddhists went to the Arabs beforehand to have a treaty. When the retreating forces of Chandram, a Chhatriya chief tried to seek asylum in the Sivistan fort to protect his forces from the army of Shah, the Buddhist community of the Sivistan closed the door of the fort for him and the Chhatriya chief was killed outside the gates by the invading army. When the Hindu king Raja Dahir was fighting the 20,000 strong army of Muhammad bin Qasim, the Buddhist governors aided, supported and welcomed the Arab invaders instead. The calculations of the Buddhist merchants and elites went completely wrong and within 200 years of the conquest by Muhammad bin Qasim in 712 AD, Buddhism was decimated in Sindh while Hinduism continued to survive. After winning over Sindh and Punjab, Arabs built several industrial quarters and the Central Asian trade routes came under the monopoly of Arab trading elites. Arabs built new towns like Manshura, replacing the old Buddhist trading centers like Brahmanabad. The share of Buddhist trading communities in Sindh, Punjab and Gandhar declined significantly and their industrial production complexes were decimated. The once large and prosperous Buddhist monasteries fell into decay. The disappearance of Buddhism was so complete in Sindh that when al Biruni visited Sindh after nearly 200 years, he could not find a single person practicing Buddhism in Sindh. All the towns which were predominantly Buddhists at the beginning of the Arab invasion were Muslim by the end of the 10th century. Reason number 8. Jajia and other religious taxes. The local Buddhist population was brought under the Jajia and other religious taxes including the tax on visiting their shrine. The trading class Buddhists also had to pay double duty on trade of goods. Most of the Buddhist traders, artisans and bankers converted to Islam to avoid a multitude of taxes and converting to Islam made better business sense in the discriminatory economic system of the new Arab rulers. This brings us to one of the most important reasons behind the decline of Buddhism in India. Reason number 9. Attacks by Islamic invaders. According to Wada, Buddhism was swept out of India because it had no answer to the violence of Islam. Another British scholar, Eliot, says that harsh taxation imposed on non-Muslims and lack of justice for them in the Islamic judicial system caused mass conversion of Buddhists as well as Hindus under a discriminatory system. The initial converts had converted only externally, while internally 
they kept on practicing their Buddhist beliefs and practices. However, the children and grandchildren of such converts were more genuine in adopting the faith. The Turk invaders destroyed several prominent monasteries and committed large-scale genocides of Buddhist population. B. S. Smith tells that Islamic attacks were the ultimate factor that led to the destruction of Buddhism in India. B. R. Ambedkar also held that it was the sword of Islam that led to the complete destruction of Buddhism in India. He says that Hindus beaten and battered by Muslim invaders could look back to the Hindu rulers for support and get it. Buddhists beaten and battered by the same Muslim invaders had no such hope. Buddhism was an orphan and was consumed in the fire lit up by the Islamic invaders. The destruction of Nalanda Mahavihar in 1197 AD gives an account of the cruelty and destruction faced by the Buddhist monks and monasteries. The Turk commander Bakhtiar Khilji entered inside the gate of the Grand Monastery with only 200 horses and took the Buddhist monks completely unaware of the attack. All of the unarmed monks and students of the monastery were put to the sword of Khilji. No one was spared. After killing thousands of monks and students, he put the monastery and its huge library on fire. This was not an accident, but it followed a pattern of destruction which all the monasteries and important sites of Buddhism had to go through one by one. Next was the turn for the Bodhgaya temple, which was desecrated and destroyed by the army of Khilji. Odantapuri and Vikramshila University also fell next, repeating the same story of the mass slaughter of monks and large-scale destruction. The Buddhist complex of Sarnath and hundreds of other monasteries across the Indo-Gangetic plains met the same destiny of genocide, loot and plunder. The monks who managed to survive fled from the north either to the south of India or across the Himalayas to Tibet, Nepal and China. Buddhist community life suffered an abrupt disruption with the collapse of monasteries and the killing of thousands of monks. The monasteries were confiscated and were granted to the Islamic commanders as war booties. Buddhism melted slowly and Buddhist populations were either converted into Islam or assimilated into Hinduism gradually. However, a large Buddhist population still managed to survive in Bengal and Orissa. And this takes us to the last chapter of the decline of Buddhism in India. Reason number 10, role of Sufism and assimilation of Buddhist believers into Islam. Bengal was one of the regions which had a large Buddhist population, even after centuries of Arab invasions. The Muslim control of trade and commercial activities had already created the groundwork for the mass conversion of Buddhists in India. The final push for the conversion of the remaining Buddhist population came from the Sufis and Dargahs through the process of acculturation and assimilation. The Dargahs owned considerable land, property and economic resources and exerted a lot of political and religious power. The Sufis gradually made inroads into the hinterlands of Bengal through the chain of Dargahs and Sarais or rest houses. It took centuries for the missionary Sufis to break the old social ties and religious beliefs of Buddhists and assimilate them into Islam. But once that was done, it was profound and irreversible. The role of Sufism was instrumental in bringing the Buddhist population of Bengal under the Sharia-based system of Islam. Islam prospered in Bengal at the cost of Buddhism. Till Islam had reached Bengal, it was mostly an urban phenomenon in India. But from Bengal, it made inroads into the countryside and the villages of the country. Though Buddhism kept on fighting for its survival for more than 1000 years, eventually Buddhism was completely wiped out in India.